This is the fully assembled Mini POV kit from Adafruit Industries and available to purchase on our web store at wwwproto picouk That's www.proto-pic.co.uk with the SKU PP ADA20. Now this kit, it's a fantastic way that Adafruit have come up with of uh, demonstrating the phenomenon of persistence of vision. Persistence of vision what that means is that you can see on the kit that there's little flickering lights. When I hold it stationary, there's little flickering lights. But when I move it about, your retina sees an after effect of that image. And it's difficult to see at the moment because we're in a very light office on a high resolution camera. But in real life, when you pass this by your, your view in a straight line like this, your retina actually sees an image built up. And we can program the flashing, the frequency of the flashing, be a nice piece of software uh, to make that say any message that we want. So the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to put this kit together, to demonstrate the kit and also to demonstrate how to program the kit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, uh, move to one of the darkened corridors of the labyrinth of protopic offices and uh, we're going to show you a nice example of a word being displayed. Yeah, that's it. Okay, in your kit you should have everything that you see on the table here. You have eight red LEDs, one battery compartment, one PCB board with silk screening, one microcontroller, a double-sided uh, piece of foam, a 20-pin IC socket, a 9-way D-type panel mount connector socket, a little screw for the battery compartment obviously, uh, three 5.6 volt Zener diodes, three 4.7k ohm resistors, resistors with the colour code yellow, purple, red and eight 100 ohm resistors with the colour code brown, black, brown. Now if we just zoom out we can show you some other useful tools that you're going to require to build your kit. Uh, as always we we'll have the helping hands magnifier, solder sucker just in case we, we need to remove a component, some good quality solder, uh, resin cord, some flush cutting diagonal snips a multimeter and a solder iron. Now, all of these items are available from our protopic.co.uk store. The first thing to do is to populate the board with all the components. It's quite a simple little board, everything's very self-explanatory. And we're going to start off with the lowest profile components first, which is the resistors and the diodes. So we're going to go ahead and fit the 4.7k ohm resistors and they go into locations R10, R11, and R12. Orientation, as you know, is not important with the resistor. You just have to get it in nicely. Doesn't matter which way round it goes. Although for aesthetics, we always like to keep the colour codes all pointing in the same direction. So everything looks nice and uniform. Now when these resistors go in, I like to bend the legs just so it kind of holds the component nice and steady. So that we can put all the components in, turn the board over and solder it all in a one -up. I'm just bending the legs at a right angle fairly close to the resistor body because this is a well made circuit board and uh, that's quite a, a good fit. Then we're going to go ahead and populate uh, the rest of the resistors which is the 100 ohm resistors, 8 of them, and they go into all the, the leftover locations on the board. Just uh, snipping them out of their paper wrap. Okay, so you can see all the resistors are now uh, put into position on the board. They're not soldered in yet, they're just placed in there. Um, we're going to get everything populated, all, all the resistors and diodes populated first. Uh, we're now going to go ahead and fit the diodes, uh, and they go into the locations D1, D2 and D3. Now, unlike the resistors and diodes, the polarity is very important, uh, but very considerately. Adafruit has put nice silk screen markings on the, the PCB to indicate polarity. The line at the end of the, the marking lines up with the black line on the diode itself. We'll just try and bring that in there. So they go in, in that location. The black, black band lines up with the white band on the silk screen. 
Okay, that's all the components soldered in. Um, now we're going to fit the serial port connector. Now you can see at the left hand side, the, the apologies, right hand side of the picture, uh, we've got these five uh, tracks here. On the opposite side of the board, on the underside of the board, there's four tracks. Now these line up with the serial port connector. They're solder buckets on the serial port connector like this and we're going to slide the board in between those solder buckets so that the five line up with the, the five on the top of the board and the four line up with the, the, the four on the bottom of the board. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. There you go. Now all we have to do is solder that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and fit the eight LEDs. Now the LEDs of polarity is very important. There's a few different ways to tell the polarity of an LED. You can do it by the telling the, the difference in the, the length of the legs. But we're not going to go into that just now. Uh, you can see that the, the board is silt screened and you can see that it's a circle with a flat edge on it. That lines up with the flat edge on the LED. You can see there's a flat edge just there. It's not like a complete circle. So just line that flat edge up with the edge of the board and we're good to go. We'll go ahead and fit the eight LEDs and solder them. There we have the eight LEDs fitted, soldered and snipped. Make sure that if you look between the LEDs and the base of the LEDs and the board, there's no gap whatsoever. That's what you want. You want the LEDs to be nice and flush to the board so that they're all pointing directly up in a nice straight line and they're all pointing in the same direction. Okay, so that done, we're now going to go ahead and fit the IC socket. Now, the IC socket has got a little notch in the end of it, and that needs to line up with the, the silk screen. So we just drop that in, solder it. IC socket in place, we're now going to connect up the power wires for the battery. Now, the red wire goes into the positive connection, and the black wire goes into the negative connection. So we'll just put that through. Last thing we've got to do with the PCV board is, uh, in terms of putting components in, is put the microcontroller on. Now you can see the microcontroller's got a little dimple next to pin 1, and it's also got a notch, which also indicates the pin 1 end of the IC. This lines up with the notch in the end of the IC socket, which in turn lines up with the little notch on the silk screen drawing. Now, we need to put this IC into the socket, but be very careful because the ICs come with a leg slightly splayed out, slightly wider than the IC socket. So what we need to do is try and manipulate that IC into the socket without bending any of the legs. They need to drop in rather than bend out. So we'll just do this with two hands. Apologies that I'm in the way of the camera. And there's the IC put in place in the socket. Okay, the last thing we need to do is put the batteries into the battery holder. I must stress that you don't actually get these batteries with the kit, you need to supply them yourselves, and they're double A batteries that you need, two of them. Place the batteries in, to the holder from the correct way around. Slide the lid on. And then there's a little screw to make sure the cover doesn't pop off. Now we're going to put this board onto the battery holder by means of the double sided sticky tape so I'm just getting the leads getting it out of the way like that so we'll just peel off the sticky tape back in. and then peel off the other layer and just give the board a twist just to dress the wire around the back of it and place it onto the board, like that, and that is your mini POV completely assembled. Now the pre-programmed code should blink these LEDs in sequence so we can just power it up to do a test to make sure it's working. That's correct. And now we're going to show you how to pro program it. Now as standard, the kit uh, arrives with a, a very simple blinking LED sequence programmed into the microcontroller. Obviously you're not going to want to stick with that, you're going to want to program something in a bit more cool. So if you go to the, the web page on our web store, 
uh, you'll find links to all of the software that's necessary to program this kit. The other thing you'll need is this. This is a USB to serial adapter, unless of course your computer's got a serial port, but most of these days they don't, so you need this USB to serial adapter. comes with the RS-232 connection on one side, has to be a male connection to plug into the, the female socket on the Mini POV, and a USB A to B converter lead. Uh, on the web page, like I say, you see all the, the software you need to download. And the first thing you need to download is something called AVR Dude, and that has to be running in the background. Now, you can program this using a, a, a text editor so you can download straight hex directly into the microcontroller, but by far the easiest way to do that we've, we've found is to download the Mini POV software, and the link for that is directly at the bottom of our web page. It's magicsoftink.com uh, Mini POV. Now when you're programming this, a, a useful tip that my colleague has just reminded me about is that when you plug the USB to serial converter in, uh, one thing that we kept on forgetting to do was to make sure that the unit was powered up. Make sure the unit is powered up when you're programming it. Because programming it does take about three minutes to download a, a very simple file into the mini POV kit, and then it has to confirm that very simple file. Programming can take up to six minutes is what I'm saying. These LEDs will flash because of the power coming in from the, the serial port, whether it's powered up or down. And it's incredibly disappointing and frustrating to realise that you've not actually done anything because you've had it powered down the whole time. So just remember to power okay, it up. Okay, so here we've got the mini POV software installed and we've also got the AVR Dude software installed. When we double click this icon, this is going to start the software running. First thing you'll see is that the message box pops up uh, to ask you how many columns wide you want the display on the Mini POV. Uh, we've selected 75 here, just a default value. Uh, click OK on that and you get this screen. Now this represents the LEDs on the Mini POV. You can see you've got eight rows of LEDs and lots and lots of columns all the way along the display. Now you can switch them all on and that's what you're going to see when you um, sort of swipe the mini POV kit past your vision. They're all going to be on. It's not going to be very interesting. You can also switch them all off. But the purpose of having this function in the software is so you can do this. You can just click and basically draw your own graphics. You could draw a little Pac-Man shape if you're if you're good with images, uh, or you could uh, just simply type in text, and that's what we are going to do. So we'll just switch that back off again and we're going to click on the text icon. We're going to print something up very, very simple. Hello! Exclamation mark. You can see you can also set the start line there. Insert that. There we go. Hello. So, we're going to just click on Done and it brings up this screen. Uh, this is the code representation of that message. Click on Compile Code and get this message box purely because the, the PC doesn't have a serial port installed but we're using a USB to serial cable, so we just click on OK on this message. Now, we have the Adafruit firmware program installed on our C drive, uh, on the POV, so just point the, uh, the folder towards where you've installed the, the firmware program from Adafruit, and click on Open. Now this DOS window opens up, and you can see it is now starting to write. This process takes about six minutes to write and then confirm. So we'll see you after that. Okay, so we've now programmed the mini POV kit and we brought it out to this darkened corridor again. So when I scan that past the camera, you should get an image of the word hello! Exclamation mark. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> programming, programming, programming. Okay, so now you've... Okay, so now you've seen the final build kilt. Cut! <laughs>